All right, welcome back to part five of this uh, walleye series. Um, I hadn't worked on it in about a week, a uh, week and a half probably, but uh, because uh, it's, today's Friday, so a week ago today, my dog <coughs> tried to act like I was 26 again. <laughs> And I was going to jump up on the back, kind of hop up on the back of a bumper of a truck. And uh, when I hopped up, my foot slipped off and basically bent over backwards and uh, ended up ripping my calf muscle. So I've been incapacitated for the last week. Um, I thought they thought I initially, emergency room, they initially thought I had um, torn my Achilles tendon. Uh, but I went back yesterday and they uh, did an ultrasound and took some more x-rays and the, uh, the special said it was just um, the, the tendon was sprained but it was torn at my calf muscle. So anyway, they, they had me in a boot all week and uh, told me to stay off of it, which I have. But uh, yesterday he told me to, he wanted me to get up and kind of move around. So thank God I had my wife here to uh, wait on me. She was a she was great. She waited on me hand and foot, and she don't know how much I really appreciate it. Um, she's, she's a good woman. But anyway, um, I'm going to be um, working on the teeth today. Um, and I, I'm just kind of experimenting here. I, I tried experimenting with some silicone. I think I've, I showed that in the last video. I put a little bead of silicone and stuck a toothpick in and pulled it up and it makes a you see that it makes a fairly realistic looking tooth but they're just too flimsy and they didn't stick well uh so i took them off um i'm gonna a lot of guys use uh rose thorns or some kind of thorn I, i've looked high and low around here i can't find anything that that even comes close to it i've got a rose bush but thorns on it they're huge and uh, they're just not going to work so um, I'm going to just break down and use the tips of toothpicks, just the very tip. And I uh, also went down, before I hurt myself, went down to um, the Arkansas River here to Murray Lock and Dam. There's always some dead gar floating on the bank or in the water. Um, so I went down and I found this little, this is off of a short nose gar. And I cut them off, and I ended up extracting some of the teeth. They were real hard to get out, and I ended up breaking a lot of them. I did manage to get a dozen or so out that I'm gonna I'm gonna see how they look and and uh, put them in there as well. So, uh, but anyway, um, I'm also going to be gluing the fins on today, and uh, I'm gonna be sealing it, and probably. Um, mounting the head back on with Bondo. I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna do that's in reverse order. I'm gonna put the Bondo the head back on, then seal it, and then uh, the next step will be gessoing and uh, and painting. So, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna try to get all this done today in this part five. But anyway, so let me get started on that. Um, get the camera turned around here, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on a walleye, they got like a double row of teeth. They've got some that go around the, the edge of their mouth here. This is the upper jaw. They have some that go around the upper mouth here. Then they got another little inner row inside here. Um, same on the lower jaw. They've got a uh, they got a little row that comes around right on the edge. So um, I've already painted the inside of the mouth um, and I may touch it up after I get the teeth in. I don't know yet. Um, so I'm, well, I will because I have to paint the teeth also. The only thing I don't like about the toothpicks is they're, they're straight and the walleye teeth are slightly curved. Um, these Gar teeth are tiny. I don't know if you can see that or not. But they are slightly curved. 
So I'm going to use some of those. I'm going to incorporate as many of those as I can also. That way it'll kind of give it the curved look. So I'm going to have to use these tweezers. Right there. And if you can see that, it's probably... Spray a little bit of this um, catalyst on here for the super glue. And I won't sit here and make you watch all of these because it's going to be time consuming. All right, there's all the teeth that I'm going to put in it. Um, I'm going to paint them now. And then I'm going to attach the head. I'm going to bondo the head to the top. The teeth are probably a little bit long on some of them. But I'm going to leave them because it's hard to get them shorter. I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do that on the next one I do. Um, some of them I'm, I'm happy with I like these ones down front here if you can see them or not those look good and a couple of the top ones do but they're just they're a little big I think on, on, for some of it but I just need to figure out a way to do better team so if there's anybody out there that knows of a better way uh, please let me know I kind of like the um, I like the guard teeth better than the toothpicks because they look more natural, but they're just so blasted hard to get out without breaking them. I don't know if it'd be any easier on a freshly caught gar or one that's freshly dead and not dried up like this one was. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't found one, so I'll have to try that next time. Next time I do one. But in the meantime, I'll research it. Or, like I say, if any of y'all know anything better to do, please let me know. So, but I think it's going to look fairly decent. All right. So, uh, let me go get set up to do this... Um, Bondo this head on here and then uh, and then I can start uh, gluing the fans on. All right, I got the head bondo back on. I'm gonna let that bondo set up. It's actually already hard, but I'm gonna let it set for an hour or so to cure good. And then uh, I'm going to start gluing the fins on. And then I'll be able to uh, start sanding that down. I'm just drawing on the the eye placement. I've got it drawn on both sides. I'm just kind of looking at it to make sure it's even as far as on top of the head, the spacing. Just want to make sure they're even. So what I'll do here is I'll just start, I've got this little, this little barrel shape. It's a, actually a steel cutting bit, but it works great on wood. Um, but I'll just start kind of hollowing out the eye space here.
You got, you got electricity up there? I know. Come on. Huh. So you just gonna brave the heat? It won't be that hot up there. I mean, it'll be hot, but where we're at, it's pretty shady and we're up to the top Yeah, it'd be 103 down here. It'd be a cool 61 up there. Whatever. <laughs> be having to wear a sweater. Yo, know, my wife is eat up with it. She's going camping. She talked her sister into going. She's over there sweating already. What have I got myself into? All right, there's the fins attached. I'm going to seal it, and then uh, then I'll mount the eyes and make these uh, seams on the pan seamless with the epoxy putty. Okay, to seal this with, I just use lacquer and lacquer thinner and I mix it in a 50-50 ratio. So it's pretty thin, so it soaks in quick. And I just use an old foam brush to brush it on with but it soaks in real quick I know it's, I know different guys use different things but this is what I was taught my good friend David Koski taught me this and it seems to work pretty good so I don't get it down in the eyes as much because that's going to be covered, sealed anyway. And after it sets up good, I'll I'll be back to uh, work on the uh, uh, mounting the eyes with the epoxy putty. All right, I'm getting ready to put this epoxy sculpt on the, uh, I'm gonna blend the fins in where they meet the body, just to kind of help hide the seams. Um, especially up here on the um, pectoral fins, I'll build up the muscle. Um, may not have to on the pectoral fins because that's a pretty tight fit same with the um, anal fin it's a pretty tight fit i'm getting better at that if i do it if you do it right you shouldn't need to do that you shouldn't need to put that epoxy sculpt in there but it's got just a little bit of a gap there where it didn't seat down firm um not so much on this side but there's more on this side with this epoxy sculpt and then around the the um, pectoral fins here where I made the hole too big same with both sides I'll fill that in with the epoxy sculpt and blend it in so um, and that's why I like carving the tail on now versus carving the tail separate and, and adding it uh, that's it's a pretty seamless uh, blend there that was always my trouble spot on putting on the fit and finish of the tail fin was right here where it goes in it's so much easier to just carve it than it is to to 
carve this piece separate and, and attach it. I could technically I could do the same thing with the anal and dorsal fins, but they they tend to get in the way when you're working on the rest of the body, so it's it's much easier to do those separate. This doesn't get in the way like these would if I was working on this. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna do the eyes first, get these eyes set first, and then um, and then I'll work on the fins. So I'll probably do most of that off camera. I'm probably gonna do most of the eyes off camera. I'm just gonna kind of show you how to start. And I've I've shown in videos before what this epoxy sculpt is. It's just a two-part uh, resin putty um, that's used for building. It doesn't shrink. It dries, cures hard, takes paint well. And I got a couple little tools here that's going to help me spread it and blend it down into the tight spots. Uh, these are just little stainless steel uh, clay working tools. I think I bought a whole set of them at Harbor Freight for like six, seven dollars. There was, uh, oh gosh, there was uh, seven or eight of them, I think. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you on this epoxy sculpt. It's a two part. And I just do a little bit at a time for what I'm gonna need. And then um, it's got about a 20 minute working time, I guess. Um, so I only mix what I need at the moment, like I'm going to mix for the eyes to, to, to do each eye. And you just get equal parts, probably a little bit more on that one. And roll them out. I don't want to roll on this table. There it goes. So I got two equal parts there. Roll them out a little bit longer. You gotta mix them good so it's a uniform color. And what I do is I, I, I roll out two long strings and then I twist them. And you can do it however you want but this works for me and then mash it together roll it out again twist it to me that's the quickest way to get them mixed just keep twisting it so put, get these out of the way here and then it becomes a uniform even color Take the, the ball put it on the back side of the eye. And I just kind of squeeze it in place. Look at it, make sure it's level and then I take this excess that squeezes out and I start blending it into the the head
I didn't bring a brush out. You can use a paintbrush, and then I've got water in here, and you can dampen your fingers and start blending it. And the water doesn't hurt it, but it helps it not stick to your fingers. I need to go get me a brush. So what I'm doing is I'm just building up that skull head bony structure of the head there around the eye and just using my finger to smooth it out See that there? Then, where my little tools go, there they are here. I'll take and I'll kind of form where that eye socket may have been on there. and get that wet that'll help it slide through there easier If that shows up you can see the and then I'll paint when I get ready to paint it I'll paint the sclera the top part of the eye here it'll be it'll match the body color so there's that one and then I'll do the other one the same way. When I get ready to do the fins, I'll come back and show you that. So I'm going to do the other eye off camera. And then I'll start on the fins. Alright. So there's the eyes. They're set. I'll do a little bit of light sanding after this sets up. Around some of the... To blend that more into the head as well. So I'm going to start on these fins now. I got a little bit left over and it's still pliable. So I'm going to use some of it here to uh, work in this uh, spiny dorsal here. And I'll say it is. It's, it's table slicking in the <laughs> roll. There it goes. So I'll just roll out a big long thin ribbon of it. Doesn't take much if you got enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay it right at the base of this fin here. Start working it up in there. I'm going to wrap this around the other side here. I have to wet my finger to get it started. And then there, that one's blended in. And then I'll do that to the rest of them. And then I'll come back and show you once I get them all done. Okay, that's going to do it for part four. Uh, excuse me, part five. <laughs> okay, it's out in a minute. It's going to do it for part five. I got the eyes mounted, fins mounted. Um, the fins are blended in with epoxy sculpt. The head uh, bundled back on. 
and the fans blended in with the body with the epoxy sculpt. Um, I didn't have to do the dorsal, I mean the uh, anal fin or the pectoral, I mean the uh, pelvic fins because they, I got a good tight fit on the slot and tab of the, of the fin. I need to work on that more. I'm getting better at it, but the, the tighter and more precise you make those, uh, the better it's going to look, the better fit and finish. So, um, but overall, I'm happy with it. This is um, this is just kind of a practice piece for me. Uh, the next one I do, of course, I'll do it bigger. So I know a little bit more about the anatomy, a little bit more about what to expect and how to uh, make it uh, come together. My only problem area I had was the teeth. Um, I think I got too many of the teeth too big. Um, if you have any comments or any ideas or suggestions on how to do the teeth on these guys, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but I appreciate y'all watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. And I will see y'all on part six painting.